Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial, we will be creating actual monsters that we can shoot and defeat. So essentially, we'll be creating most of the game without the coins. All right, so first of all, I, I would like to make a change in bullet. So just open, oops, just open your script bullet. The way we did it last time is that it only shoots up, except in Everwing later, we'll have some bosses that'll shoot downwards and they'll shoot in unexpected direction. So we'll need to make that change. To do that, we'll need to let whoever uses the bullet to specify the direction. So we'll need to store the direction. I'll do that in a vector. And we'll also need to know whether the bullet came from a player or from the boss. So we'll uh, do that using a boolean, a public boolean that any other script can use. So if it's from the player, it's true, otherwise it's false. And then we need to make that change in, in it as well. So we'll add a vector two for direction so we'll pass it in as a my dir and we'll just set dir to my dir all right and now we will also need to know whether it came from the player or not so we'll need a boolean is from player that the other script will send and we can store that information in this variable is from player Great. We also don't need the color field because we'll never need to use it again. The bullet doesn't change color. It's, it's sufficient to set the color on it. So we can actually remove all of this stuff. Great. This is looking better. And now to actually use this direction, we need to change vector 2up to direction. And that's all for the bullet script that we'll change. And now in player, we will need to reflect this change. So we need to change the init function because now instead of three parameters, we have five. So bullet go dot init, and we need to give it a direction. So the direction will just be up for the player, this bullet, but remember the boss can shoot down or to the right or left. So we'll need that flexibility to set direction later. A speed, I thought the bullet was kind of slow last time. So I'm going to set it to 10 this time and the color will be the same as this thing. One thing I notice is that we're getting this component and getting its color every single time we shoot a bullet. Why not just do that once and store it in a variable? So we only have to do it in the beginning. Let's do that. So I'll create a field for color. So we only have to do this computation once. Color is get component sprite renderer color. Okay. And then we just need to use that color, that, that color field that we just have. Now we need a scale and we need to say, yeah, I am from coming from the player. Remember that uh, shoot bullet is happening 10 times a second. So it's kind of expensive to keep doing this 10 times a second. That's why we need to move it out in a variable. Okay, so that completes player and bullet. If we run this, there should be no problems. Okay, there is a problem. Let's address it. And this is a problem. Okay, so we don't have color anymore. We deleted it. So we need to change that to my color. I think that's everything. It's good to keep testing so that you don't get lost in case you make a mistake. Great. So you can see everything works just fine. Next up, we need to create the actual monster. So to do that, we will follow a very similar procedure to creating the player. But this time our monster will be square. You can choose any shape, but I'm choosing square. So again, we'll need to create, get a square sprite. We do that by going to assets, create, sprites, and choose square. And I'll just call it a square. And then you can drag the square into the hierarchy again. You will see it's here in the game. We'll re rename it to monster because that's what it'll end up being. I'll change the color to some sort of red maybe. Nothing too harsh on the eye, it doesn't matter what you choose. I'm pretty happy with this. So that's my monster and I'll add a box collider 2D. Last time we added a circle collider, but since this is a square, we'll need a box collider. And once again, we need to say is trigger and add a rigid body 2D, which is kinematic. So this is all very important. Again, you need your rigid body to be kinematic and box collider to be is trigger for any of this to work. Then just like we did for player, we'll need a script for the monster. So 
just create a new C sharp script called monster and attach it to the monster. And that's it for our monster for now. We will fill in the script later. So let's just drag the monster into prefabs. And now we've saved the monster, which means we can safely delete it. And that's it for creating the monster. We will also need to set tags to the bullet, the player, and the monster so that we can identify which one is which when we collide. So for example, if the bullet hits the monster, the monster will know that something hit it, but it won't know it's a bullet unless we check, is it a bullet? And one really good way to do it is to use tags. So to do that for player, we just select the tag. Make sure you're in prefabs and not in your hierarchy. So in prefabs, click the player tag and change it to player which is predefined by unity but for monster we'll need to create our own there is no such thing so we'll add a tag and click the plus we'll call it enemy and we'll also add another tag for bullet all we're doing in this is adding tags to the tag library in a sense we're not really adding it to the prefab yet that's why you need to go back to the prefab and actually choose enemy for the monster and bullet for the bullet. So that's it for setting tags. It is now time to create the actual monster's behavior. All we need it to do for now is just to move down and take damage whenever it gets hit by a bullet. And eventually when its health is zero, we want it to die. But before we start scripting monster, let's think about the future a little bit. So we're going to be also creating a boss. So once you defeat all the monsters, you get to a boss. And the boss will also, in a sense, be moving down and having some health and taking damage from bullets. But in addition, it'll also be shooting bullets at the player and stopping right about in the middle. So we need to start thinking about writing really good code that's reusable. It would be convenient if we could use one script to add functionality to both the monster and boss, at least the common functionality, and then just add a little bit more to each the monster and the boss separately for their own parts. So that's exactly what we're going to do using inheritance, which is a really powerful object-oriented concept. So basically, we will have an enemy script, and we'll have two scripts, one for the monster and one for the boss. Now these arrows represent that the boss will have all the functionality of an enemy, but some more. So it'll extend from enemy or inherit from enemy. And the monster will also do the same. It will add a little bit more functionality to enemy. This script will not be attached to anything. Only monster and boss will be attached to prefabs. So this will be an abstract class. That's the terminology for it. So let's do that. So in scripts, let's create a new C sharp script for enemy. Uh, let's open it. The way you declare a class to be abstract is this simple keyword. You just type abstract here. And this means that it cannot be attached to any game object and it must be inherited from. Okay, we don't need to start an update so we can delete those. One thing that's common between all the enemies is health. Just store it as an integer. On void awake, which occurs before start, it occurs only once in the beginning of the game, we need to set health to get health. Now we haven't defined get health yet. We will need to do that. Let's do that down here. So public abstract int get health. That's a mouthful. But essentially what this is saying is I don't know what the health of the enemy. This script has no clue what the health is of the monster and boss. They have different healths. So it's going to basically ask the monster and boss script, hey, what is my health? And the boss and monster script will tell you abstract forces monster and boss to overwrite that and give it a value if this doesn't make sense now you'll see what i mean later we also need some way to die so we need protected virtual void die and all we're gonna do for now is just destroy the game object this is a, an inbuilt unity method to destroy a game object we've used it before to destroy bullets Another th function we'll need is to take damage, which takes in the damage. And this, again, needs to be shared between both the monster and boss, because both of them will be able to take damage. So all we do when we take damage is take the maximum of zero and health minus damage. Okay, why do we do this? What does this mean? This means that we're setting health to health minus damage. 
So whatever the health is, let's say 100, we take 30 damage, it's 70 now. 70 is bigger than 0, so we choose 70. But if this is ever negative, which means, let's say the health was 10 and now we took 30 damage, so the health would be negative 20. That doesn't make sense. But health should be floored by 0, so that's essentially what we're doing. We're saying it can't go below 0. If the health is 0, then all we're gonna do is die. Where? What's even calling take damage? We need to take damage only when we get hit by a bullet. So how do we do that? We need some sort of way to detect when we're hit. And the way we'll do that is using on trigger enter 2D, collider 2D, other. This is an inbuilt Unity event, which is called whenever a trigger collider collides with something whenever it detects a collision now remember when we set collider to trigger we did that so we can use this function and not any default unity behavior if you didn't check is trigger on your colliders this function will never be called so this could be a common source of error watch out all right so we're given a parameter other this is what we've collided with we've collided with some collider let's figure out whether the collider is a bullet did we get hit by a bullet if the other transform tag is bullet, make sure to spell this exactly the same as the, your tag bullet. That's another common source of error. This exact string. If we got hit by a bullet, then take damage. So the way we do that is we get the damage from the bullet. So bullet bullet is other get component bullet so all we're doing is from the object we just collided let's get the bullet script we know it must have a bullet script because it has a tag bullet if the bullet is from player then we take damage now let me just check in bullet did we define a get damage no we didn't so in bullet we need some sort of damage the way i'm going to do that is just create a public int called get damage this will return a damage. So let's say all our bullets do 30 damage. We don't need it to change. If the boss shoots the player, then the player just dies in one go. But if the player shoots the boss or anyone else, they do 30 damage. So this is actually only relevant for when the player is shooting. So in enemy, if the bullet is from the player, then we take damage from the bullets get damage. So this will return 30. The reason I didn't just put 30 here is because I want the damage number to be inside bullet. It makes code organization a little bit easier. And philosophically, I think the bullet should decide how much damage it does, not the enemy. I don't say, if I'm shot, I don't say, oh, I should take 20 damage. No, the bullet decides that. Anyways, so now I'll just destroy the bullet. Again, so let's go through this logic. If the bullet hits me, I know that from the tag, then all I do is check if the bullet is from the player, and if it is, then I just take damage. And that's it for enemy. For now, let's go back to monster and actually make enemy concrete, which means we can attach it to the game object. Right now we can't attach enemy. So the way we do that is go to monster, and the first thing we need to do is extend not from mono behavior. We don't need to do that because enemy already extends from mono behavior. We're gonna extend from enemy. And when we extend from enemy, we are also extending from mono behavior. So we're getting all of this and everything from mono behavior. So the first thing we need is some sort of concept of speed. So float monster speed. I'll just set it to two, which means the monster goes down at a speed of two. We don't need start anymore. On update, we're just gonna move down. Classic trick, transform.translate just straight down there's no complex directions here times time dot delta time and we multiply that by monster speed we also need some sort of way of changing the speed so public void set speed and the way i the reason i need to do this is because at every level the monsters will get faster and faster and that's what happens in everwing so this function allows some other script to change the speed of the monster and the last thing we need to do is to actually make this particular function concrete so 
and you must because it's abstract if something is abstract you must override it so instead of uh, the semicolon we'll put braces and instead of abstract we will override so we're overriding the abstract and all i'll say for now is that our health is a hundred to start off with maybe i should rename this to get in it in it health or something i guess get max health could be a better name because this is this could mean just the current health but i don't want it to mean that i want my code to feel really clear okay let's just start thinking ahead another thing we'll need is some sort of way to explode into coins once we die one really useful function will be public abstract int get coins remember in neverwing the boss gives you a lot more money than the monsters and we will also do that so let's say our monster will give around three to five coins maybe and the boss will give about 10 ish coins so where do we decide that amount of coins well in monster we will override get coins so again make sure it's the exact spelling we're not gonna give 100 coins we're gonna give only three coins for now and that's all for enemy and monster right now if you run this nothing should really happen because we have no way of putting the monster in our game so that is what we will do next let's test what we have so far and we can do that by just dragging the monster prefab which should have all the scripts the rigid body kinematic and trigger collider as well as the enemy tag we'll just drag monster into the hierarchy and you'll see a monster show up here if we click play the monster should move down and we should have shot the monster successfully if we move the monster up a little if you know maybe that was too soon again i hit run the monster should die if this is not happening for you but you see a monster moving down and it's not dying make sure to check that you have all the colliders and rigid bodies on your bullet and monster and that the tags are all right as well as well you probably have the script if it's moving that's good to see we already have some sort of way to destroy monsters by shooting them